I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents. As a specialist in these low water, easy care plants for over 20 years, I've noticed what people ask me most is, can you identify my succulent for me? In this video, I'll identify and simplify the 20 main types of succulents for you. You'll be able to recognize them and learn what you need to know to grow them well. Let's start with a few basics that apply to nearly all succulents. Succulents famously store moisture in leaves or stems to survive dry spells, but they do need water. Aim to keep soil about as moist as a wrung out sponge. Succulents are light lovers that grow toward the sun. So with few exceptions, if you put succulents in shade, their leaves will droop and their stems elongate. But there is such a thing as too much sun. Most succulents do best with some shade during summer heat waves, especially in the afternoon. And in winter, many types of succulents may be damaged if temperatures drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. For each of these succulents, I'll direct you to the page on my website that gives more info or to another of my YouTube videos you'll find helpful. Aeoniums come from the Canary Islands off the west coast of North Africa. They thrive in mild maritime climates with dry summers like coastal Californias. Aeoniums that look dead in summer may merely be dormant. This is the same Aeoniums wortkop hybrid a few months later after winter rains revived it. Their main growth season is winter, so fall is the best time to plant cuttings. A rosette that flowers will die after blooming, but not all Aeoniums in a colony bloom the same year, so those that do die aren't missed. If you love Aeoniums, you'll enjoy my Aeonium playlist on YouTube. Agaves are native to the southwest in Mexico. Know the size at maturity of any agave you plant. Some, like Agave Victoria Reginae, stay small and are good for pots. Others, like Agave Americana, commonly called century plant, get immense. Don't plant one within 10 feet of a driveway, pathway, flight of stairs, gate, door, or utility box. Many agaves pup from their roots. This is either a bonus if you want them or a nuisance if you don't. Get rid of pups if you don't want the plants to spread. Agave attenuata, the foxtail agave, is colony forming. It has a tall curved bloom spike that from a distance looks like a furry tail. Agaves do die after flowering. Do watch my popular agave video, which features 30 varieties that are great for gardens, large and small. Aloes are mainly from South Africa. Leaves of many aloes redden when the plant is stressed by cold, drought, too much sun, or poor soil. Tubular flowers of aloes are mainly orange, red, or yellow. This is at the Huntington Botanical Gardens in midwinter. Aloe speciosa is unusual in that it has multicolored pink, white, and red flowers. Dwarf aloe cultivars are prized by collectors, like these on the trophy table at a Cactus and Succulent Society show. They're great for containers. Aloes range from a few inches high to 10-foot trees, and their thick, lance-like leaves are smooth, bumpy, or prickled, often with toothed margins. Learn more on my YouTube channel's Aloe Playlist. Bocarnias are tree succulents that make good houseplants when small. They don't have succulent leaves, but rather store water in bulbous trunks. Flowers are large, feathery, cream-colored sprays. They're followed by pink seed capsules in female specimens. Bocarnias can get 30 feet tall, with bases four to six feet in diameter. Use the trees to add texture, height, and interest to gardens. They need no care and make great focal points. However, 
Like yuccas, their ever-expanding trunks can break pipes and containers. The broad category of cactus refers to succulents, usually from desert climates, with spines, which, by the way, are modified leaves. Cacti have vivid, satiny flowers that typically last only a day or so. Echinopsis, Trichocereus, and Tricholobivia have dramatic flowers in every warm hue. One common type of cactus is those with pads that grow one from the other. This is Opuntia violacea, also known as Santa Rita cactus, or purple prickly pear. Closely related Cylindropuntia, or Choya, is often seen in desert gardens. Here, a morning dove nests amid Choya spines that keep predators away. There also are globular cacti, of which Mammillaria is the largest genus. Some elongate over time, like these amusing Mammillaria matudae. A third category of cacti are columnar varieties known as ceroids like this silver torch, Cleistocactus straussii. Barrels are another general category. Rat tail cactus, Aporocactus flagelliformis. I think they renamed it. Dizocactus flagelliformis. I wish they'd stop renaming things, especially when they have six syllables. This is a tropical cactus. It uh, grows in trees and hangs down, and I have it in this tall, tall pot. In this video and the gallery on my site, see more than 50 collectible specimens, many in bloom. Cotyledons often are confused with jades, but flowers are very different. Cotyledon orbiculata is the most common. Leaf colors include green, blue, powdery mauve, and gray. Coral bell-shaped flowers appear in early summer. This hanging variety is cotyledon pendens. Crassulas are tough, resilient, unfussy succulents with remarkable survival skills. The downside is that most are frost tender. Shrub jades have thick stems and form mounded, branching plants. This is golden or sunset jade. Most but not all crassulas bloom in winter. Clusters of tiny star-shaped flowers range from white through shades of red. Stacked crassulas have leaves that appear threaded along ever-lengthening pendant stems that turn upward as they seek light. Leaves of stacked crassulas might be long or short, square, triangular, or oval, and loosely or tightly packed. Like aloes, crassulas turn red when stressed by drought and sun. This one's leaves have shriveled from lack of water. When it rains, They'll plump up again. Dazzlerians from the desert southwest in Mexico are large, spherical, narrow-leaved succulents. This Dazzlerian wheeleri bloomed in my garden for the first time at about age 10. Look at that. Isn't it great the way it, it moves? And you think I'd get poked by it but it's not all that sharp. And it's got these really stiff, almost mini chopstick-like leaves. It's a succulent, and I know what you're thinking. How can it be? Because it doesn't have fleshy leaves. But where it holds its water is in the trunk. Dudleyas have been in the media due to being poached from their habitat along the Northern California coast. There are two distinct types of Dudleyas those that form colonies of multiple rosettes with pencil-like leaves, and those with solitary wide-leaved rosettes. Don't water Dudleyas in summer because they're dormant and unaccustomed to summer rainfall. Echeverias produce lantern-like flowers on upright arching stems from late spring through summer. Many Echeverias look like plump petaled roses, but unlike roses, Echeverias come in shades of blue, green, teal, chocolate, silver, and gray, as well as red, lavender, and purple. Some also are fuzzy. 
many of the 150 recognized species have been crossed to make new cultivars, of which there are well over a thousand. An Echeveria's color and shape may vary depending on how old it is, the time of year, and the direction, duration, and intensity of the sun's rays. Arguably, the most exotic Echeveria cultivars have ruffled or bumpy leaves. Aim to provide Echeverias with enough light that the rosettes don't flatten or stretch and leaves retain their colors, but not so much light that they sunburn. See how I created my own potted Echeveria garden. Succulent euphorbias are often mistaken for cacti, but euphorbias are native to the Old World and cacti to the Americas. Euphorbias vary from tall and slender to short and rounded. Shrub forming Euphorbia milii has spiky branches and bright colored bracts. Medusa euphorbias have bumpy green stems that radiate from the core of the plant. This is Euphorbia caput medusae. Unique among succulents is upright orange sticks on fire. The sap is toxic. When it gets large over time and needs pruning back, be sure you know how to go about it. Graptopetalums are trailing succulents that form plump gray rosettes at the ends of ever-lengthening stems. Leaves turn pinkish yellow in sun and blue-gray in shade. Leaves detach readily, and from their stem ends, they are capable of growing roots and new little leaves. Graptopetalums have been crossed with sedums and echeverias to create colorful hybrids that include graptocedums and graptovarias. Aworthias, diminutive succulents from South Africa, are perfect in windowsill pots, miniature landscapes, terrariums, and dish gardens. They hybridize easily, and there are thousands of cultivars. Succulents in the genus Gasteria are closely related to Haworthias. Of all the succulents I've grown, I'd have to say Haworthias probably need the least care. I've had really good luck with this uh, terrarium that features Haworthias, and that's what these uh, narrow-leaved upright rosettes are. This one has a long flower stem as you can see and that's about it for flowers. They don't get much bigger than your fist and they tend to be shades of green and variegates. See me and Annie of Mountain Crest Gardens Nursery plant Haworthias in colorful windowsill pots. Ice plant, also called Mesembryanthemum, is a catch-all term for small or ground cover succulents with shimmering daisy-like blooms. Flowers open in sun and close in low light. Those that root from ever-spreading stems help keep weeds at bay and lessen soil erosion. I have a lot of yellow Lampranthus in my garden because it's a tough, low-maintenance filler plant that blooms on and off all year. Delospermas are especially cold tolerant. Collectible mesembryanthemums, or mesems, perfect for rock gardens and pots, include tiger jaws, Focaria tigrina, and living stones like Fenestraria, baby's toes. Learn more about ice plants on my website and in my YouTube video. Kalanchoes are beautiful soft succulents, easy to propagate, typically with showy flowers. Those in the subcategory Bryophyllum are characterized by baby plants that frill leaf edges, fall off, and root. Leaves of some species are fuzzy and gray. The largest is Kalanchoe beharensis. Prized for its overlapping oval, bright red leaves is Kalanchoe luciae. Among its several cultivars is Kalanchoe dragonfire. Often found in supermarkets and garden centers are Kalanchoe blasveldiana and similar multi-petaled Kalandivas. Tropicals such as Kalanchoe sensepola 
grow baby plants at tips of flower stems. If you love Kalanchoes, be sure to watch my video, Kalanchoes for your garden. Portulacaria afra, commonly called elephant's food or elephant bush, grows in Hawaii, Florida, Arizona, and California as easily as its native South Africa, where it's called speck boom. The regular green variety, Portulacaria afra, grows six to eight feet tall and spreads indefinitely. It looks like jade, but leaves are smaller and the stems red and wiry. Learn more about this versatile succulent in my Portulacaria afra video. The genus Sansevieria recently was added to Dracaena. Common names include mother-in-law's tongue and snake plant. When grown outdoors, the plants prefer a mild climate, ideally near the coast. This is in Laguna Beach, California. Short-leaved varieties commonly called bird's nest sansevierias include lovely gold hahnii, H-A-H-N-I-I. Where winter temperatures drop below freezing and summers aren't excessively hot, dainty-leaved sedums thrive. One example is sedum dasyphylum at center. Surrounding it is sedum morganianum, commonly called burrow tail. It's from Mexico, home to more than a hundred species of sedum with larger leaves. In general, the smaller and finer the leaf, the more cold-hardy the sedum and the less it likes hot sun. Angelina stonecrop at center is more heat tolerant than most. Some sedums turn bright colors in full sun, like this sedum nusbomerianum. In southern and coastal California, it's a colorful filler for pots and garden beds. I grow shrub-forming sedum praealtum, shown here in bloom, in my own garden. Like small-leaved sedums, sempervivums are cold-tolerant succulents that don't like hot summers. Most species thrive outdoors year-round, only in zones 4 through 7. Semps are commonly called hens and chicks because they produce offsets that hug or hang down from the mother plant. See sedums and sempervivums featured in my YouTube video, Plant a Bowl with Succulents. The genus Senecio has been split, and 20 species are now in the genus Curio. If you're curious about Curio, see what's changed on my website's Senecio page. String of Pearls is perfect for hanging baskets and tall pots. On its left is purple-green Senecio jacobsenii. The designer of the succulent display at Sherman Gardens in Corona del Mar, California, used Senecio serpens, now Curio repens, to create a river-like swath of blue. Hi, I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin in a parking lot, and I saw something here I thought would be fun to show you. It's a big Senecio bush in flower, and that's the defining characteristic of Senecio, are these dandelion tufts of flowers. But look at that one. Wow. So I'll look up what species that is and put it in the comments. Senecios and aeoniums go dormant in summer. Fall is the time to cut back leggy ones and start them as cuttings. Yuccas have sword-like leaves and store water in their trunks. Ranging from Guatemala to Canada, these unfussy succulents become trees with age. Frequent watering produces faster growth and little to no water slows it. Most species tolerate temperatures below freezing. Certain varieties get immense over time. This decades-old yucca aloefolia is on a residential street corner in the Bay Area. Yuccas that stay manageably small and make great enhancements to gardens include the variegated cultivars Color Guard, Golden Sword, and Bright Star. I can't resist including these glass yuccas by artist Dale Chihuly at the entrance to the Desert Botanic Garden in Phoenix. So this is Yucca vidriosa chihuliensis. <laughs> 
I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.